I was heavily into student politics and black politics in particular. So I was, you know, president of the African Caribbean Society. Um, we were very pro-black, pro pro-Africanist. You know, we were really um, involved in all of that. We even went to a few Nation of Islam meetings, etc. And um, so I wasn't interested in Muslims. The first time that I actually became aware of Islam and had to start asking myself questions about it was when I went to Egypt for a, um, a music festival. And uh, while I was there, I noticed uh, the women in hijab all around me. And um, contrary to obviously how I feel now, at the time I was shocked and deeply troubled uh, by what I considered, you know, the symbol of male dominance and oppression. And, you know, I was all for liberating them from their veils. But that was what kind of opened my eyes to Islam. And it was when I met a sister who was actually wearing the hijab and I said to her, you are beautiful. Why do you cover yourself? And she said, because I want to be judged for what I say and what I do, not what I look like. And that hit me in a place that I had never been hit before, because I had never considered that viewpoint. I had never considered that angle. When I grew up and the, the culture that we grew up in, it was, if you've got it, flaunt it. As everybody, most, most people in the world, if you're young and you're pretty, for any woman, you're told that's your currency. That's what's going to get you what you want in life. And for this woman to tell me she didn't want any of that, I thought, what is this Islam that makes this woman so strong that she doesn't need what almost every other woman in the world needs, which is male validation. And that's what got me thinking about hijab, about Islam, about my life, about her life, and the way I wanted to go forward from then on. So I resolved, upon coming back to the UK, to start reading the Qur'an and seeing what Islam was all about. And I did that, and alhamdulillah, many of the injunctions in the Qur'an made a lot of sense to me. Uh, not drinking alcohol uh, was one that comes to mind. You know, the idea of there being a creator, of there being a God, of us needing Him, of us needing to pray to Him, that made a lot of sense to me. So I started putting those into practice straight away. Uh, although... At the time, I did not want to become a Muslim because, as far as I was concerned, that was just too extreme. Uh, and another thing as well is, as I mentioned, I was coming from this pro-black Africanist background. And as far as I was concerned, Islam was for Arabs and Asians. And I did not want to sell out, if you like. It was something very important to me. I did not want to sell out my identity and sell out my ancestral heritage, if you like, to ape somebody else, to become an Asian, to become an Arab, to become a Pakistani. And if that's what Islam meant, then I didn't want that. So, a sister I know who was actually from a Caribbean background, she became Muslim. And uh, we were talking a lot at the time about Islam, a lot about Islam, and she, taught me, she asked me to teach her how to tie head wraps and stuff like that. And um, she said to me, you know, you have to choose. You can't sit on the fence like this. And I said, well, as I said, Islam is for Arabs and Asians. I'm an African woman. What's it got to do with me? And she said, well, they're African Muslims. And I said, yes, that's true. There are. I'm going to go to Africa and see how African Muslims practice Islam. And alhamdulillah, I did. I went to Senegal and to Guinea. Uh, but it didn't even take me getting past the airport at, in Paris before I saw the Muslims from Senegal and said... I, I, I like this, I, I like this way, I like what it does to people, I like the manners that it gives them, I like the dignity that it gives them, and that's kind of how it started. So I went to Guinea, and when I was there, they taught me how to pray, I fasted Ramadan with them, I started covering, you know, as the women in Guinea cover, etc. And then I took my shahada when I came back, mashallah, my father had already heard on the grapevine that I was interested in Islam and I was doing some Muslim things. And he was very upset by that. Um, so I knew that it wasn't going to be something that my family were going to be very happy about. But uh, at the time, as I said, I was living in the UK and I had lots of Muslim and revert friends at the time. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't something that I worried about in my own inner circle. So, you know, I did, we just went to um, the Central Mosque in London 
and we went up there and it was it was very simple really it was just an affirmation of what had already gone before really it wasn't a huge milestone because I was already praying I was already fasting I was already covering this was merely a formality so when I took the Shahada that's what it was like it was just a natural flow personally I feel that every one of us has been given gifts inshallah by Allah every one of us has different talents and my fervent wish and my dua is that Allah makes whatever he has given me in his service inshallah and that whatever skills he's given me I can use them to worship him better and if that means giving da'wah alhamdulillah if it means writing books alhamdulillah if it means talking and giving lectures etc alhamdulillah I'm happy to do that for the sake of Allah because the, all the gifts are from him anyway alhamdulillah unfortunately if you go to any bookshop in any western bookshop you know around the world you will find books about Muslim women but more often than not they go into two categories there's the escapee and the victim and the Muslim woman is constantly being stereotyped in these two ways we want to break that stereotype we want to get behind the headlines and behind the hype sisters are always saying things like I feel liberated by the hijab Islam has liberated me etc so blending in is not the aim I think for me, I, especially with this latest row about the veil etc in the UK I feel the onus is on me and on other sisters in my position to constantly explain to people who we are, what we are about, what we stand for, why we do what we do because a lot of the attitudes towards Muslims and Muslim women in particular are based on ignorance most people in the UK for example have never met and talked to or had a deep conversation with a Muslim woman let alone a Muslim woman who covers the way that I cover that's something that will definitely lead to the feelings of fear or, or, or feeling insecure or, or you know any of these th things that people say they feel when they see women like myself this is fueled by ignorance and fueled by not having experience of us and not knowing us for who we are so um, for me it's not about blending in it's about how can I have a positive impact on my society how can I be an active member of society while still worshipping Allah while still obeying my Lord while still remaining in the bounds of the Sharia inshallah how can I help here you know what can I do what is my contribution that's more what I'm focused on I think one piece of advice would be if you want the truth if you want to worship God, if you want to worship God in the way that He wants to be worshipped, put that first. Because that is more important than anything else. Um, and that's something that we all need to realise. That at the end of the day, we are created to worship our Creator. And that has to come first. Islam was revealed for the whole of mankind. You are not to become a carbon copy of somebody else. Certain aspects about all of us, whether we be white, black, Arab, Asian, African, whatever. Certain aspects of our natures or the things that we're into or our cultures will be fine with Islam and other aspects will not be okay with Islam for everyone, not just somebody coming from in from outside. There are many things that Muslims do and Muslims have that are actually contrary to Islam. You are still an individual, Allah made you that way and you will find your place within Islam inshallah but the only thing is to be sincere for his sake and do it for his sake, not because it fits in with your life plan, or it fits in with your goals, or it fits in with your ideas. When Allah gives us a plan, we fit the plan. We don't